Okay, so when it comes to solving an algebra equation like this, well, many people skip this critical step. Matter of fact, if you don't take this step, you really uh, don't know if, in fact, you have the right answer. So let's go ahead and see if you can do this problem. What we have here is the square root of 3x minus 2 is equal to x minus 2. Of course, you're looking to solve for x. And feel free to use a calculator. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one moment. And then, of course, we'll walk through step by step exactly how to solve this problem. And, of course, we'll talk about this particular step that uh, a lot of people skip. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so uh, this type of equation is called a what? Well, we're talking about something called radical equations. Of course, this is a square root symbol, but in algebra, if you're studying this, what you're studying is how to solve radical equations. But uh, let's go ahead and see the answer here. So the square root of 3x minus 2 is equal to x minus 2. Hopefully, a lot of you are feeling pretty confident. And let's go ahead and take a look at the correct answer. So x is equal to 1, and x is equal to 6. All right, so did you get the, uh, these numbers as your answer? Okay, so uh, that is a question, right? So if you got x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 6 as your answer, well, I'm going to have to give you, and you're not going to like this, uh, I'm going to have to give you like a B plus. Now you might be saying, what's going on, Mr. YouTube Math Man? You said these are the answers. Uh, is this a trick uh, question? Well, uh, basically, this ind indicates to me that, in fact, that you missed this critical step that we're talking about, okay? So the actual answer here is x is equal to 6. 1 is not an answer, okay? Now, if you got x is equal to 6 and only 6, well, that indicates to me that, in fact, you took this step that is very, very, uh, very, very critical. And uh, with that being said, boy, I could give you a better happy face than that. I have to give you a happy face and a plus plus, a 100%, and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that, indeed, you are a certified professional expert in the area of checking for extraneous solutions and radical equations. Now, when you tell your friends and family uh, all of that, they're going to be like, I have no idea, you know, uh, what that means, but it sounds pretty impressive. So tell them anyways, but great job. Now, if you got one and six as your answers, well, you were pretty close, okay? It's not that easy to go from a B plus to an A plus, but you got to understand uh, this critical step, which, of course, uh, we're going to look at in just one second. So let's get into this right now. A lot of algebra students, a lot of people make this mistake. So we have, again, a radical equation. The square root of 3x minus 2 is equal to x minus 2. So the strategy here is pretty straightforward when it comes to radical equations. What we need to do is get rid of the square root, okay, or the radical. So let's take a look at a simple example, something like this square root of x is equal to 2. So this is a nice, lovely, real easy radical equation. So how can we get uh, rid of this square root, okay, because we're looking to solve for x. Well, the way we get rid of this is to square a square root. When you square a square root, you're basically the square root goes away. So if I had the square root of x, I want to get rid of the square root. I just square it, and I'm left with x. And, of course, that's what I uh, want to be left with, just x by itself. But if I square the left-hand side of, the, of an equation, I have to square the right-hand side. So the square root of x, let's just kind of think about this for a second, is square root of some number is equal to 2. Well, you know, probably in your brain you're saying, ah, the answer to this question has got to be 4, and you would be right. So again, we're going to square both sides of the equation, so x is going to be equal to 4. Okay, so at this point, most people would be pretty happy with this as a solution, uh, but there is a gigantic step that we're not taking here that I'm going to show you in the actual problem, right? Now, uh, kind of already alluded to it, we have to check for extraneous solutions, and this can cause a lot of confusion. Matter of fact, we'll do it right here in this problem, and then we'll uh, take a look at the actual problem. 
All right, so x is equal to 4. So this is only a possible answer. You see, when you square a variable, okay, anytime uh, what we're doing here is actually multiplying the square root of x times the square root of x on this left-hand side. That's what it means uh, to uh, uh, square the square root of x. Uh, anytime you do this in algebra, you can introduce something called extraneous solutions. And the only way an extraneous solution means is an extra solution. Matter of fact, in this problem, the actual problem in this video, we end up with an extraneous solution. But the only way you can um, determine whether, in fact, you have a good solution is you have to plug it back in to the actual problem. So we have to replace this x with 4. All right, so let's do that. So we have the square root of 4. Is the square root of 4 equal to 2? That is a true statement, but there's another source of confusion here because the square root of 4, we're not going to think of the square root of 4 as positive and negative 2. That's only if we have like x squared is equal to 4, and we're taking the square root of both sides uh, when we're dealing with a quadratic equation. This is another very confused uh, part of doing these type of problems. All we're concerned about, all we're, all we're concerned about here is the principal square root. So that means just the positive version. So the square root of 4 is in fact a positive 2. So this is a true statement indicating that this is a good solution. Okay, so that is just a very simple example of how to solve radical uh, equations and to check for extraneous solutions. Now let's go and get into this problem. And uh, of course, I kind of already gave you the secret to how to solve this. Uh, so what we're going to do here is square both sides. So this is the setup. Now, obviously, there's going to be a, a, you know, a decent amount of algebra involved, but let's go ahead and go through it step by step. All right, so when we square both sides, uh, we're, we're going to have uh, the square root of 3x minus 2 squared is just going to be 3x minus 2. Again, the square root is going to go away. And then x minus 2 squared is going to be x uh, minus 2 times x minus 2. So we're going to want to multiply this using the FOIL method. All right, so x minus 2 times x minus 2 is going to be x squared minus 4x plus 4. Again, uh, x times x, this uh, x times this negative 2, negative 2 times this x, and negative 2 times that, that negative 2. Now, if you don't understand any of the algebra that I'm doing here, uh, you want to check out like my Algebra 1 course or my Algebra 2 course. You'll find links to those in the description below. I'll give you full instruction on all of this, but hopefully most of you are with me. Okay, so at this point in the problem, we have a quadratic equation. We have an x squared as our highest term. So this is a quadratic equation. So you want to write this thing in standard form. In other words, we want to collect all of our like terms and set this equal to zero. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so when we do that, right, uh, we're going to end up with x squared minus 7x plus 6 is equal to zero. So here, I can move this 3x over here. Uh, so I can subtract 3x from both sides. Typically, we like to have our variables on the left because we only have two things on the, on, on, uh, on the left-hand side. Let's move, all, let's move this over to the right. This will actually be equal to 0, but we can write it this way as well. All right, so when we subtract uh, uh, 3x from both sides, we get negative 7x. And then, of course, when we add 2 to both sides, we get a positive 6. So this is going to be equal to 0. Again, uh, pretty basic algebra stuff, and hopefully you are all with me. Okay, now here we have a lovely quadratic trinomial, x squared minus 7x plus 6, and we are hoping that we can factor this because it's always the easiest way to solve a quadratic equation that is a quadratic trinomial, and indeed we can factor it, and hopefully you know how to factor, and if you don't know how to factor, well, that is what I would call an algebra emergency. If you cannot factor, you literally will not be able to pass algebra. Again, if you need help with this stuff, check out those uh, specific courses that I referenced. All right, so x squared minus 7x plus 6 is equal to 0. We can factor into uh, the linear factors or binomials x minus 1 times x minus 6. Okay, so we're still not even done here, but we are almost there because this times this is equal to 0. Well, we can use something called the uh, zero product property because something times something else is equal to zero. That means that this or this, one of these things has to be zero or both have to be zero. So we're going to set both of these things equal to zero and solve both of these uh, binomial factors. All right, so x minus 1 is equal to zero. That gives us x is equal to 1. And then x minus 6 is equal to zero. That gives us x is equal to 6. So at this point in the problem, if you did all this work, and of course, if you said these were the answers, well, that is very good. However, you missed this critical step because if you were to check these solutions, we're going to find out here in a second that 1 is not a good solution 
and six is. So let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. I definitely need your help. You see, if you need help in math, you shouldn't be shy to ask for it. The worst thing uh, to do is just to kind of struggle in math. Like, you know, be like, all right, I don't get it. I'm struggling and I'm struggling. I'm just like, you know, all over the place. I don't, you know, it's okay to try to figure things out on your own, okay? You know, problem by problem. You know, if you're doing your homework, you know, that's one thing. Uh, but if you need help, if this is like an ongoing chronic thing where you're always struggling, then you're going to have to get some outside help. Now, the first place you should uh, get help from if you are a student is your teacher. All right. Ask more questions. Say, hey, teacher, can I see you after school, before class, whatever, you know, uh, try to dominate your teacher's time. OK, that's like, you know, a uh, great thing to do. And by the way, if you are at the high school or college level, you got to realize that tutors, math tutors, uh, can, you know, can make easily uh, 80 to well over 100 plus dollars per hour, maybe even more, especially at this in, in more advanced level. So um, you might be saying, nah, that's too much. No, no, I'm telling you right now, I've been doing this a long time, especially, you know, uh, high school level math teachers, right? They are in demand. There's more people looking for uh, their help than they can, um, you know, uh, basically afford to help. So here's the thing. When you ask your teacher, to help you, it's like you're getting a very expensive free math tutoring, you know, so take advantage of that. But beyond that, you know, if you, if you need more help beyond that, you're going to have to find more help. So find someone like myself. If you like my teaching style, I break things down step by step by step. But my best math instruction will always be in my course. Uh, my courses, you can find links to those in the description uh, of this video. But if this stuff is helping you out, help me out by hitting that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well. All right, so let's get back to this problem here. So we have x is equal to one and x is equal to six. All right, so um, you know we're feeling pretty good about our possible solutions, but we don't know whether in fact both of these uh, are good solutions or one is or both are bad solutions. And I'm telling you right now, in uh, radical equations, you just don't know. There's no way to be like, nah, I think these are the right answer. You're just simply gambling if you don't take this next critical step, which is to check the solution. Matter of fact, even if you had the right answer, if you didn't show this on your work, on a test or exam, your teacher is going to be like, mm, you didn't show this. You didn't verify, uh, you know, this. So you have to do this. This is not an optional step. You must check your solutions. All right. So let's check X is equal to six. And what we're going to do is we're going to replace that X with six. And then we're going to take a look at the resulting math. So three times six is of course 18, 18 minus two is 16. So we have the square root of 16. Is that equal to, of course, on this side of the equation, we had x minus two, so that's six minus two, which is four. Is the square root of 16? Again, the principal square root, the positive square root, is it equal to four? Indeed it is, so that's true. So that means that x is equal to six is a good solution. It passes the final test. All right, so let's check um, one now. All right, so we're gonna uh, replace the x's with a one, okay? And you can see the work right here. So we have the square root of three times one minus two. Is this equal to one minus two? Got to be careful with positive and negative signs here. So one minus two is a negative one. Now, three times one is three minus two. That is one. So the square root of one, again, principal square root is a positive one that is not equal to negative one. So many people confuse this because they're like, oh, the square root of one is equal to positive negative one. No, wrong, wrong, wrong. It's only the principal square root. It's the positive version. So one is not equal to negative one. So we got to throw out one as a solution. It is what we call extraneous or extra. Okay, so if you understood all of this right before this video, well, that is a good indication that you're learning algebra pretty well, but there is a lot more that you need to know. The key here, the big takeaway is that, you know, when you learn this stuff, you have to really be paying attention to all the details, all the steps that are involved. If sometimes you're thinking, oh, well, you know, it's uh, this step is not that important. This step is not that important. It's kind of like it just reminds me of, now, let's suppose you took apart some uh, machine at your house, right? So it, we have all done this. Maybe it's a piece of furniture or something that has a lot of different moving parts, drawers, or something like that. Let's say you take this thing apart, right? And you got all its little parts. You got all these nuts and bolts and screws hanging around here. And then you're like, you know what? I'm going to put this thing back together, 
<laughs> now, when you put this thing back together, uh, let's say you have like a few extra screws and bolts, right? And you're like, boy, I got this thing back together, but uh, I don't know. I don't remember what these little <laughs> bolts or screws went. You know, they're like over here to the side. Maybe it's some sort of machine that you put back, to put back together. We have probably all had some similar experience. They're like, well, hopefully those little things are not that important. Let me just hope this thing works you know, or stays together without these little tiny missing parts that I don't remember where they go. Well, it's the same thing in math, right? All these little details count. They absolutely count. That's why you have to be extremely focused and you got to take great math notes as well. All right. So hopefully this little video helps you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.